Hello everybody, my name is Eric Lara. I am a student of Master in Computer Science at Universidad Autónoma de Guadalajara. This is an Artificial Intelligence Assignment by Dr. Ubaldo Quevedo. Here, we're going to study the results of research paper generating videos with Sim Dynamics. The authors are Carl Bondrick, Hamed Pirchi Bash, Antonio Toralba, but not me. Well, let's start. Understanding object motions and scene dynamics is a core problem in computer vision. Video recognition as action classification and video generation as future prediction are tasks that require a model of how scenes transform. The creation of such model is challenging and complex. The main interest of this work is focused on the fundamental problem of how scenes transform with time. Annotating this knowledge is expensive and ambiguous. Authors instead seek to learn it directly from large amounts of in the wild on lovelet video. To do this, they used recent advances in generative adversarial networks, which was extended to video, introducing that way a two-stream generative model that explicitly models foreground and background separated. The main contribution is to show the leverage of large amounts of unlabeled video in order to acquire, to acquire priors about scene dynamics and the development of a generative model for video. The main idea of generative adversarial networks is to train two networks, a generator network G which tries to produce a video and a discriminator network D, which tries to distinguish between real videos and fake generated videos. To train these networks against each other in a mean max game where the generator seeks to maximally fool the discriminator while Simultaneously, the discriminator seeks to detect which examples are fake, as we can see the formula describes. This is a diagram of network architecture for the generator. The input is 100-dimensional Gaussian noise. There are two independent streams, a moving foreground pathway of fractionally strided spatiotemporal convolutions and a static background pathway of fractionally strided spatial convolutions, both of which upsample. The model learns without supervision to generate these pathways, such that when they are combined, the video looks real. Below each volume is its size and the number of channels in parentheses is shown. Now let's see a little bit more about the component of the model generator G and discriminator D. The desired characteristics of generator network are input is a low dimensional latent code Z, 
the network to be invariant to translations in space and time, a low dimensional Z to be able to produce high dimensional video. Assume a stationary camera and usually only objects move. To it. To achieve desired characteristics, two different network architectures were tried. One stream architecture and two stream architecture. Now, the characteristics of discriminator network. The desired characteristics are to be able to classify realistic scenes from synthetically generated scenes and to be able to recognize realistic motion between frames. A single model was created to solve both tasks. A five-layer spatio-temporal convolutional network with kernels 4 times 4 times 4 so that hidden layers can learn both visual and motion models. Once the components of the model were ready, the approach for generated learning should be implemented. The generator and discriminator networks were trained with a stochastic gradient descent. Maximizing the loss of T was alternated with minimizing the loss of G in a fixed number of iterations. All the networks were trained from scratch. The network was numerically stable. Implementation of cross entropy loss to prevent overflow. Adam optimizer and learning rate of 0.0002 and momentum term of 0.5 were used on the network. All videos were normalized on range minus one, two, one. Training typically took several days on a GPU. When the model was created and trained, the time to experiment has come. Four different experiments were done. The first one is on labeled dataset. Two million of videos were downloaded from Flickr. The videos were divided on two sets, unfiltered labeled videos and filtered label unlabeled videos. Golf course, hospital room, train station, and beaches were the four kinds of scenes used to experiment. Some pre-processing and stabi or stabilization were performed on camera motion of the videos, as the interest is focused on the movement of objects and not in the camera shake. The stabilization process is to extract SIFT point key points usage of ransack method to estimate rotation, translation, and scale of adjacent frames, and finally warping frames when necessary. If homography moved the frames and led empty spaces, those were filled with information of the previous frames. Those are some generated videos of the two-stream model. Examples of the four scenes are shown in the references slide in the link to the original paper and animated movies. Experiment 2 is about video generation. Here, 
one stream and two stream generator were, were evaluated. For each scene category, a generator was trained. Qualitative results show that generated scenes tend to be fairly sharp and motion patterns are generally correct. For example, the beach model tends to produce beaches with crashing waves. The golf model produces people walking on the grass, on the grass, etc. One common failure mode is that the objects lack resolution. <clears throat> For example, the people in the beaches and golf courses are often blocks. With those experiments was created a simple but reasonable model for large-scale generative video. Evaluation of generated videos was made through Amazon Mechanical Turk, where 150 different workers provided 13,000 opinions about the more realistic video chosen between two different ones. Workers were paid one cent per comparison, and only workers that historically have a 95% approval rating on Mechanical Turk were uh, required. From experiments, bad workers that frequently said real videos were not realistic were removed, but the relative ratings did not change. The table shows the percentage of times that workers prefer one generation from one model over another. In all cases, workers tend to prefer video generative adversarial networks over an autoencoder. In most cases, workers show a slight preference for the two-stream model. The third experiment is about video representation learning. The model was used as a way to learn unsupervised representations for video. The two-stream model was trained with more than 5,000 hours of video of unfiltered, unlabeled videos from Flickr. The discriminator was fine-tuned on the task of interest, which was action recognition, using a small set of labeled video. To achieve this, the last layer, a binary classifier of the model, was replaced with a K-weight soft mass classifier. The network initialization was done with the weights learned from the generative adversarial network. Also, experiments with training a logistic regression on the last layer, which performed worse than the others. Finally, the model slightly outperforms another recent unsupervised video representation learning approach. On the other hand, current approach uses an order of magnitude fewer with fewer parameters. It means five layers against eight layers and a low resolution video. The evaluation of, represent of representation learned by the discriminator for action classification. By fine tuning the discriminator on a relatively small labeled dataset, a better performance was obtained than random initialization and better than handcrafted space time interest points. STIP features. Current model slightly outperforms another unsupervised video representation despite using 
an order of magnitude fewer learning parameters and only 64 times 64 videos. The results suggest that with just one eighth of the labeled data, a match of performance to a randomly initialized network that used all the live labeled data. The fine-tuned model has larger relative gain over random initialization in cases with less labeled data. Also experimented with varying the amount of labeled training data available to the fine-tuned network. Figure B reports performance versus the amount of labeled training data available. As expected, performance in increases with more labeled data. And fine-tuned model shows an advantage in low data regimes. Finally, Figure C plots the relative accuracy gain over the fine-tuned model and the random initialization. This shows us that fine-tuning with current model has larger, larger gel relative gain over random initialization in cases with less labeled data, showing its utility in low data regimes. And the last experiment is about future generation. For this experiment, the two-stream model was used, but the initial input was a static image instead of the latent code. This was done by attaching a five-layer convolutional network to the front of the generator, which encodes the image into the latent space. The rest of the, of the generator and discriminator networks remained the same. Also, an additional loss term was added that minimizes the distance between the input and the first frame of the generated image. In the formula, x0 is the first frame of the input. G0 is the first frame of the generated video and lambda is part of reals which is an hyperparameter. The upper images are examples of future generation videos which are given a single static image. The lower images show examples of the hidden units in the encoder of future generator. The results of experiments show that extrapolations are rarely correct and often have fairly plausible motions. The most common failure is that generated video has similar scene but not identical to the input image, as changing colors or dropping objects, which was solved by a color histogram normalization in post-processing. Generated videos are usually not the correct video, but was observed that often the motion are plausible. Is not known the existence of an approach that can directly generate multi-frame videos from a single static image. Those experiments might show an important application of generative video models. On the conclusions, we can see that visualizing representation requires understanding how objects move so that network may need learn to recognize some objects internally. 
understanding scene dynamics will be crucial for the next generation of computer vision systems. The paper explored how to learn some dynamics from large amounts of unlabeled video by capitalizing on adversarial learning methods. As dynamics is expensive, learning from unlabeled data is a promising direction. Current experiments support that abundant unlabeled video can be lucrative for learning to generate videos and learning visual representations. Here is a link where the original paper can be found. Also the results of the experiments including but not limited to video generation, conditional video generation, technical data, the data sets, and even more. The link is also available on the description of the video. Well, thanks for watching.